Hundreds of Beavers might be the perfect video game movie. Now, I spend most of my media consumption time playing video games. Movies, television, books, all that kind of takes a backseat for me. I'm never up to date on the happenings in the world of moving pictures. Fortunately, they make movies and television for people with perpetual video brain. While the rest of the world is still coming down from the high that was Amazon's fantastic Fallout show, which I'll echo now, yeah, it's really good, I have been blessed by one of the best video game adaptations I've ever seen. It's called Hundreds of Beavers. Let me explain. This is not a movie adapting a game, rather it is a movie that adapts the experience of playing a game into the film watching format. A significant chunk of the movie involves watching protagonist Gene Kayak, hapless frontier brewer turned trapper, learn his newly acquired trade as he contends with the raucous wildlife of rural America. You've got beavers, naturally, but also rabbits, wolves, and my friends and I as we watch the movie. Each time Gene completes a literal loop of checking his traps and their effectiveness, he returns to a trader and turns in his pelts for new items that will make his next excursion theoretically more profitable. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Hundreds of Beavers is a slapstick comedy that lifts heavy inspiration from the era of film when that was a viable genre for a major release. For the kids at home, in case they couldn't tell, the black and white aesthetic of this movie is in reference to the fact that said era happened when your great grandparents were children. We had elements of slapstick when I was a kid from the likes of Adam Sandler and Will Ferrell, but a lot of it came down to, and then this character gets hit in the nuts. Not so in Hundreds of Beavers, which features, I think, one decently earned bit of testicular torture? Rather, the entire film is a physical comedy. It's a series of bits and gags that cover an impressive 108 minute runtime. Throughout the film, we follow the unfortunate Gene Kayak, a man who was once renowned for both the quality of his Applejack and his alcoholism ruining parties. Unknown to Gene, beavers gnaw away at the legs of his monstrous kegs of Applejack, setting in motion a cartoonish series of unfortunate events that culminates in Gene's entire orchard being destroyed, and by extension, his livelihood. This entire opening sequence is mostly done through layering and After Effects animation that feels reminiscent of a Homestar Runner cartoon about ye olden days. It both creates a visual identity for the movie early on, and makes the project feel more amateurish than it is, with the singing pioneers perhaps being the worst illustrative work in the movie, and having the unfortunate distinction of being one of the first things you see. Hear me now, stick with it. These animation techniques shine later in the movie, and sequences get progressively more elaborate and intense in ways that will make anyone with AE experience kick themselves for not thinking of it first. Slash complimentary! What follows this raucous opening is a slow setup of how Gene will eventually get back on his feet by learning to survive in the wild. This section is a little longer than it needs to be, I think, and starts with shots that made me question whether or not my movie friend had tricked me into watching some weird art house picture. Thankfully, that's not the case, and the comedy does pick back up, but it's a lull in the film that happens unfortunately early. In the world of mostly watching movies on demand through this or that service, I feel the surreal visuals and slow burn at this point may not do the movie any favors, leaving less attentive viewers to bounce off before getting to the good stuff. Seeing as how I've experienced the same problem in the much, MUCH lower budget arena of free-to-watch YouTube videos, all I can do here is throw up my hands and commiserate with what I imagine the filmmakers would say. A lull has to go somewhere, and that was a good place for it narratively. Which, I agree with. I just know how people are. What won't cause people to dip is the sound design. <laughs> Sound work in this movie is incredibly crisp, and I cannot give enough praise to the sole credited sound designer, Bob Barreto. There's this one sound effect used as a sort of expressionistic way of complementing mood indicators that appear over characters' heads, a very video game way of expressing emotion. This effect is so satisfying, I've tried to isolate it from the rest of the soundscape to use as a general notification tone in my real life. It is incredibly pleasant, and I would like to keep hearing it, which is the highest compliment I can pay to a sound effect. The dialogue is almost exclusively composed of sounds rather than words. Grunts, 
howls, and heavy breathing of both pain and pleasure. This means that the sound design had to do extra lifting to sell the movie. This extends to the score composed primarily, or maybe exclusively, by Chris Ryan. Again, excellent work here. Music has to both highlight the action and not upstage it, requiring a very delicate hand in both the composition and mixing stages. The music in Hundreds of Beavers isn't something you'll catch yourself humming later, but you're not supposed to. The only track that really stood out to me was the one that accompanies the credits, but that's because, well, I'll just show you. Okay, here's the track. Just a taste, because it's library music, and YouTube copyright scares the ever-loving shit out of me. The beginning might ring a bell, at least if you're familiar with certain hack frauds or this specific classic video. I don't know why this choice was made, but whomever made it did not get paid enough. Spoken dialogue is used a couple of times as a way of selling a punchline, and both instances were satisfying. Think Mel Brooks's silent movie. I think this choice serves the movie well, as watching the trailer for this director-writer team's last film, Lake Michigan Monster, shows that dialogue may not have been their strong suit, though I am hesitant to pass judgment here with only a trailer as evidence. Damn it, that aforementioned physical comedy, though, is where their work is at its absolute best. Gags are fast, satisfying, and imaginative. Dialogue would only serve to hold the movie back from doing what it wanted to do, which, I think, was to be as loony as possible. But that era of movie making is not the only influence in Hundreds of Beavers. In fact, I think the movie wears some of its visual inspiration on its sleeve in a way that is brazen without being belaboring. It's a little bit of a lot of things, but not done in such a way that it feels laden with references. This is what Ready Player One dreamed of being, without the soulless beating you about the head with titles and exact replications of characters and moments from other media. It's like Bad Hooch, where each piece is so obviously its own entity that the mixture is a muddled mess. By comparison, Hundreds of Beavers is like an expertly crafted pot of stew. It's hearty, filling, and full of different flavors that come together to make something original as a whole. And I'm licking my lips wanting some more. But David, I hear you saying, where's Where the video, video games? games? Oh, dear friend, do I have good news for you. They're all over Hundreds of Beavers. From the fur trader having a stall that feels straight out of Ocarina of Time to HUD elements keeping us abreast of what Gene's current animal carcass total is on his several excursions out to test his trapping abilities, there is a heavy gaming influence from top to bottom. I think my favorite tiny gag in the entire movie was this one, where Gene has to hurry between two traps before predators can get to his hard-caught prey. After failing to make the trip once, he sets out again with determination, and right here, he rolls forward. Why? Because it's faster, you dingus. Obviously. In a weird way, I feel that Hundreds of Beavers is a better video game movie than most movies based on video games. There are parts that feel like watching gameplay of a kind, and they're satisfying and fun in the same way watching someone bumble through an adventure game can be. I may not be controlling what's happening, but I can still get a sense of what that might feel like if I could and chuckle to myself because of what's happening on screen. Wikipedia says the film is inspired partially by Mario games, which cites a non-quoted line from a piece on Variety, so I'm not entirely convinced I see what that inspiration is outside of, I don't know, money being giant coins. I'm just saying, I see a lot of Zelda here and not a lot of Mario, and I think I know my Zelda's from my Mario's. Thank you very much. More to my point, I've seen movies that capture elements of specific games. I've seen movies that ape the video game logic in a realistic world thing. I've seen movies literally about playing video games. But this movie, with its off-the-wall Three Stooges ass humor, is more similar to the experiences you have as a gamer than any other movie I've seen. It's sort of why I feel no hesitation talking about it on this channel of, ostensibly, video game content. If you like games, you'll probably like Hundreds of Beavers. 
It's zany yet cozy in its sensibilities. I'll call it a little like an indie game in that way. Put this on the box. Hundreds of Beavers is the Stardew Valley of film. That'll definitely turn heads in the cinema world. <laughs> Hundreds of Beavers is a visual spectacle and a gift in an era of endless computer-generated dragons and explosions and whatever the hell happened in the last movie I saw in a theater. Lots of the movie is possible because of computers, either through animation or compositing, but those tools feel like tools rather than selling points. The technology and limitations of budget allowed for the filmmakers to supplement their artistic vision rather than substitute for an artistic vision. Ultimately, the movie is a joyous celebration of many things and a clearly defined individualistic expression all on its own. It's absolutely a joy, despite some of the rough edges. I think movies like this are rare, both on this scale and done with this kind of aplomb, and we could do with a few more lower budget, more human productions. And that's why you should watch Hundreds of Beavers.